Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Q of the Day. Uh, it is Sunday. It is 11 o'clock a.m. Texas time. Everything's right in the world. So uh, we've got uh, Q of the Day, which is a pretty good question about dollar inflation, and uh, the C of the Day, which is correction of the day, which I have to go over uh, just one thing. So I've been doing pretty good as far as not making uh, too many colossal errors, uh, but every so often I do a stumble. So I just make, need to correct myself and just say, uh, hey, made a mistake, and I'll correct that. So uh, for Q of the Day, uh, this comes to us from John. And John says, hello, Dan. I enjoy the podcast. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Help me wrap my brain around something, if I have this wrong. By pegging stable coins to any fiat or dollar or whatever, fiat, cash, won't we still suffer from inflation, deflation, hyperinflation? By pegging any coin to the dollar as it inflates, doesn't that have an impact on the coin tied to it? And uh, it's a good question. And so it's one of those things that people say like, you know, because we're always looking at the actual market and saying, oh, well, you know, Bitcoin's going up and down and the, and the value of it is, you know, going from 10,700 to 10,900 and, and then, then it goes on 10,000. So we're always thinking about it. It actually fluctuates. So with uh, stable coins, it's not like that because it is pegged to the dollar. It's always going to be around a dollar. Like, you know, sometimes Tether is like 99 cents. Sometimes it's a, it's a dollar or one. So maybe that, that is the confusion. But it really goes down to the actual strength of, of the dollar. So if you have uh, Tether or um, USDC or whatever else, uh, any kind of stable coin else that you have, uh, it is pegged to that dollar. So uh, the dollar strength goes up, it goes up. The dollar strength goes down, it goes down. And this is one of those things where people, they get confused about the actual dollar. So like, oh, well, you know, the dollar isn't, isn't worth as much. So instead of a dollar being a dollar, now it's 90 cents. That's not really how it works. Actually, um, there is this, this, this great image that I've used a couple of times. I'm going to use it again because uh, I like to reuse stuff. I throw things away when it's good, good info. And it talks about the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar from 1913 to 2013. And uh, uh, I... I uh, would hate to see what the purchasing power is in 2020. Jeez, that would be an awful one. So as we can see right here, in 1913, uh, the Federal Reserve was created, and a dollar was worth a dollar. Everything was good and right in the world. Everybody was happy. And uh, this is when you get your grandparents going, you know, I could have bought a car for a nickel or whatever else. And, you know, maybe they could have because, you know, the dollar was worth so much uh, back then. I mean, I'm just kidding. It was not worth a dollar. But, uh, but you can see as uh, uh, time went on, it just kind of collapsed. And that's around 1920, 1918. And then, of course, in 1933, FDR's executive order makes it illegal to hold coins, bullions, or certificates. So it went a little up, up a little bit. And then, of course, then it started to go down. 1944, Bretton Woods established the USD as the world's reserve currency. And you would think, okay, well, you know, it's the world's reserve currency, so the purchasing power should go up. Ah, no, not at all, because Federal Reserve is there to uh, bombard the day and just start printing uh, cash all over the place. And, of course, 1971, Nixon closes the gold window. Uh, modern day fiat currency system only. So the dollar, of course, is not backed by anything. It's just the uh, uh, faith and uh, trust of the U.S. government, which, you know, who doesn't want to trust the U.S. government? So uh, we have that, and if it's not backed to the gold, and that's a big thing. And now in 2013, uh, a dollar that you could have had in 1913 in 100 years was now, it's now worth a nickel. So here is the problem um, with the dollar losing its purchasing power and all the uh, the Federal Reserve actually printing money because when the Federal Reserve prints money, which they did, you know, I think uh, what, two, three trillion, something like that, you know, just a little bit. Um, it doesn't go to me and you first, right? It doesn't like it, it starts getting printed off of them. Here you go. Uh, usually it goes to these big players, these big institutions, the big banks. And then usually a, a large chunk of that money uh, goes to large corporations, conglomerates and whatever else. So uh, they have all this money and it hasn't really disseminated throughout uh, the whole economy. So hey, they haven't flooded the actual market or you know, uh, the, the economy itself with just dollar bills. So their purchasing power is pretty much on point until they start to inject that uh, into the market by buying whatever they buy. You know, they buy back their stocks, they buy back more assets, or they buy assets, or they buy you know, uh, whatever they buy. And uh, then it goes down to like people you know, like you and me who just get the scraps and we're like, hey, thanks. And of course, the dollar comes to us and we're like, hey, this is now worth three cents. What the heck happened? So as you print more money, this is the problem. So the original question is, uh, it's pegged to uh, these stable coins, so one to one. So it's not gonna be like you're gonna see like 90 cents, 80 cents, 70 cents. What it's just gonna be is that your stable coin, it's stable, just the purchasing power sucks. 
and that's really what happens. So uh, that's all. That's all for that one. So hopefully, uh, uh, John, thanks for that good question. I really appreciate it. And then let's go on to the C of the day. Now what you think. So correction of the day, uh, there was a post that I put out. Uh, it was about Alex Maschioli. Uh, I'm always talking about on, on, on the show because he is, you know, traditional finance. And now he's got into uh, cryptocurrency digital assets. And he's got his pulse on like pretty much what you would call whales and big players in the institution on top of all the big names in cryptocurrency uh, that he gets on his show. And um, he had a segment where it was, it was talking about is Cardano, Chainlink, uh, Theta uh, is about to explode. And then here's some, you know, they do a bunch of technical analysis, which I must tell you uh, puts me to sleep. But uh, I mean, for, for some of you TA people, I know you guys love it, and gals which are, there's not that many, many uh, gals on my show. I will, I'll just say that because that's just the, the demographics. But uh, when, when he's doing TA, uh, it was a lot of good information. And uh, Monty, uh, one of the guys from Market Rebellion, he had called Chainlink at uh, like, this is when it was like 17, 16, 17, 18 dollars, somewhere around there. And he's like, it's going to 1050. And I was like, this kid doesn't know what he's talking about. And then of course it went to 1050. And now he's calling for it to actually you know, run up. Uh, up to a margin of 25%, and it looks pretty good. They also talk about, like I said, uh, Cardano and Chainlink and everything else, and uh, the different, um, uh, what are they talking about, as far as uh, banks and stable coins. So it was actually all good news. And what I wrote was, uh, bad news if you're a holder, check the data. And I put that out on Friday. And while I was trying to rush and get things done, so I was trying to put out, I was trying to put out the video, uh, I was trying to you know, push th this information out, trying to line up my, my show next week, and I'm home. I'm helping homeschool my grandson. So it's like everything is everything's all on at once. Oh, on top of the other businesses, uh, you know, for like my Amazon, the sports facility, and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, let's get this done. And I just got discombobulated. And I put in uh, bad news if you're a holder. So it uh, should be good news. So I corrected that. And then I and everybody who and I will tell you this. Thanks so much for letting me know that I screwed up because uh, without you, I wouldn't have known I screwed up. So thanks. Uh, uh, so what I did was I just wrote it back to everybody and said, hey, that's my fault, and I changed the title. So uh, that was the C of the day. Sorry about that. And, um, I mean, regardless, though, I mean, it was still, it's still good information. Like, if, if it's bad news and, and they talk about the market's going to crash, then maybe you want to start to, you know, take some of your funds out. I'm not that way. I just invest. I, just, I don't really even care. But, uh, you know, if that was the case, sure. That, now that it's good news, you know, maybe you look at that and go, ah, well, you know, maybe I can plan for it to take profits or, uh, maybe I want to uh, increase my position another 5 or 10% because it looks like things might go up. That's all up to you. But, uh, yeah, sorry about that one. A little, little see of the day, a little error. But, uh, hey, no one's perfect. All right, so that's it for, for that segment. Let's jump back. All right, hope that answered everybody's question on that one. It was a pretty good question. I like that one. Uh, a lot of a lot of history behind that as well. So uh, that's it for today's video. If you need an alternative to Coinbase or KuCoin... <laughs> then definitely take a look at the uh, exchange and um, wallet fees uh, spreadsheet. There is a link in every one of my videos in the description. It's going to look something like this. And what it does is it breaks down all the different exchanges and wallets and decentralized exchanges that I've ever used or am currently using. And if I recommend them or not based on different criteria. And I talk about all the different fee charts and if you're going to uh, get any kind of interest rate just for just for sticking them around or any or any kind of fee for taking them off and swapping there all that stuff and uh, i just give you like you know just a breakdown of what i've what i've got and what i don't recommend eToro don't recommend them and uh lastly i have a one two i guess one two three punch as i call it now uh celsius voyager and kraken there is no perfect exchange let me just say that Voyager's got its issues, Celsius has a little bit of issue, Kraken has a little issue, but uh, it's the ones that I use the most and the one I recommend. You can you can go right to Kraken, right to Celsius, right to Gemini, what, it doesn't matter, you can go right there. But if you use my affiliate links, you can get between 10 and 25 bucks if you sign up. And uh, that's the big thing. So thanks uh, for sticking around. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.